Welcome to part one of making this needle felted Siberian Husky. This tutorial could also be used to make a number of similar dogs or even a wolf. You could modify it just slightly to make it the colors that you want, change the eye color or even the body proportions to be more lean with longer legs, a little bit for a wolf or however you'd like to modify it. In this part of the video, I'm going to be working on making the armature and getting it basically covered in wool so that I have a starting point to begin sculpting this dog. So I tried this time to include a tape measure and, and actually give measurements. A lot of times I just sort of freehand this stuff and I'm not really maybe paying enough attention to what I did and I get questions about how big was this and a lot of times I don't remember. So I'm trying in this video to include a little bit more of the information of the size and this armature is very different than a lot of the armatures I make and sometimes I don't even make armature so don't feel like you have to do it exactly this way or anything like that. It's just enjoy it, have fun. If you'd like to try and make it exactly like this, here's the measurements, this is what I did, but don't feel like you have to do it exactly this way. So I am going to try and show what I did here. At two and a half inches, I bent that um, front leg, and at about two inches, I bent the back leg. Now on this one, I bent back into the first bend about an inch. And then what I'm doing is just making the legs match. And the same on the back, just bending them so that they match. This next one is about an inch and a half the bend on the back leg. And then on the front leg, it's about three inches. And this will actually be all the way down to the bottom of the leg. And then I'm going to cut the wire so that there's just a little bit that remains at the bottom. And that is not going to be the paw. I'm actually going to fold that little bit over once I wrap it in wool. So it doesn't have to be very long, it's just enough to fold over. Here I'm wrapping this. I, I had some leftover quilt batting from a different project and I thought, you know, I'm just gonna try that. I had this little strip of quilt batting. I thought maybe I can fill some of the main part of the body with the quilt batting. Um, it, it did work, but I actually don't recommend this. So I did not put quilt batting on the um, materials list in the video description. It doesn't felt very well and I really had to keep pressure on it and keep holding it until I got the wool around it and really secured. So it did work but I, I really wouldn't recommend it. It's not really worth the frustration. I was just trying to reuse some <laughs> materials that I had. Um, yeah this really wasn't working. So I'm holding it in place because otherwise it's just gonna unwrap. In fact, I had to put those pliers on it just to hold it still while I <laughs> get the wool. So now I'm actually wrapping it in the wool, which will felt really nicely. And it did felt into the, the quilt batting okay. One thing about this particular armature is it is using the 18 gauge floral wire. So it's pretty stiff. There's a lot of resistance in working with it and if that's daunting or if you feel like it's too much strain on your hands to work with this kind of floral wire, you can definitely go with a higher gauge, maybe 20 gauge or even something like chenille stems if you just want to go with having something to give you the structure but not having to fight with how stiff this is. It is kind of nice Sometimes I feel like to use this really tough wire because once I get it bent in place, I feel like it really holds its shape. And all I'm working on right now is just getting the pose that I want. This husky was going to be in a sitting position. So I bent the back and I am bending the hind legs to be more tucked under the body. On this particular sculpture, I 
did not wrap the wire of the legs or tail with chenille stems, which I do like to do because it catches the wool so nicely. But I was trying to really keep the legs really thin. And so I did not use any chenille stems on this project, but you definitely can. And I do feel like that really does help the wool to start wrapping and gripping around the wires really easily. The little half inch bend that I have in the base of the tail right here is just the area that I intend to fill with wool. Um, kind of more of, it's part of the rump and, and the back. Just always remember that whenever you're felting around wires, there is a chance that your needle will break. So again, this video is sped up and I actually and poking this with a lot more care and caution. But I do, I believe on this project, I actually break two needles. So it does happen. And um, you just wanna really feel where the resistance is and then back off if it's, if you feel like you're hitting that wire. The reason I was using the black needle is because it's my thickest gauge needle so it's less likely to break, but it's not impossible to break. I use several different needles on this particular dog, and I'll try to make sure I explain why I'm using each one. The one that I'm using right now is just a triple needle, a felting pen, and it just helps to get the felting done more quickly. Just making some adjustments to the pose, making sure that it looks how I want it. And here's some still shots if you want to compare. I'm going to move on to wrapping the legs with wool. So what I'm trying to do is get a thin, fairly even piece of wool. And then I'll begin wrapping it by attaching it to the body that I have so far. And then pulling it very tightly around the wire. And keeping tension on it the entire time. You just want to try to wrap it really thin and I just keep pinching it with my fingers to hold it because there is nothing really to keep this wool in place on these really smooth wires. When I get to the very bottom I'm going to use my pliers and I'm going to turn that little piece of wire that's sticking out. I'm going to crimp it upward to try and help hold that wool in place at the bottom of the foot. And since the wool didn't make it all the way back up to the shoulder to be felted back into a place where it can be secured, I'm just adding a little bit more and wrapping the part that I had already had loose ends, just rewrapping it with this new piece and I'm going to bring it all the way back up to the shoulder area and get it attached. The main thing is just to keep it pulled really tight against the wire. I did the same thing to the other front leg and now I'm going to move on to the back legs. And just really keeping tension and keeping it pulled so that it doesn't become loose and, and fluffy on the legs. It helps to keep the legs nice and thin. So again, I'm just crimping that wire around just to hold the wool and I will actually build the paws on top of like the front edge of this. That won't be the paw itself. That way I can have wool with no wire in it to build up all the little toes and paw pads and get the detail that I want without a piece of wire in the middle of the paw.
And there's a couple spots on this leg where the wool got a little bit too loose and fluffy, so I'm just going to go ahead and felt that down so that it tightens up. And then I repeated the process on the other leg. And now I'm going to do something similar for the neck and the head. And this is actually just a, a frame for the head. The head isn't going to be that tiny. So again, this is the black 36T needle, and it's my widest gauge needle. And this is the clover felting pen. And I actually don't know what size needles it has, but I think they may be either 38 or 40 gauge. And my the needle that I use the most often is the yellow one, which is a 40T felting needle. I just feel like it's the easiest for me to felt with. But in this video, I definitely am going to be making use of some of the other ones that have more specific functions. So the only reason I'm using this black one is because it's just stronger and I'm the needle is so close to the wire at this point because there's not a lot built up around it that it is a risk of breaking. This is what I have now. And I'm going to put some still shots from multiple angles just to show where I am as far as coating the armature with wool. And from this point, I'll start working on actually creating the sculpture part of the dog. <laughs> 